Mark the fifth chapter. Mark the fifth chapter, and there's a lot of verses to cover, so I'm not going to read all the verses and have you standing for a long time, but I just want to just read two of them. But we're going to look at Mark the fifth chapter, the first through the 20th verse. But just in your hearing, I want to read verse 6 and 7, uh, trying to carry on from last week, still in the topic of spiritual warfare. Um, and um, I think this is the bottom line right here. <laughs> uh, Mark, the fifth chapter in the sixth verse, if you got to say man. Amen. Reading from the King James Version, it says, but, he, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. I just want to preach from a subject this morning. Greater is he. Greater is he is he. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, as I shared in the previous Sunday, uh, spiritual warfare is real. Uh, it, it is something that all believers uh, must deal with because they have chosen a side. <laughs> Leaning on the Lord's side, serving in the Lord, and with that comes a struggle. As we saw that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of darkness. Amen. And demonic activity is actually evident throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. Demons were active in hindering or trying to hinder the plans of God. <laughs> you, you, you see it uh, in Eden when uh, he caused Adam and Eve to sin. Seemed like he had gotten the upper hand. But in Genesis 3.15, we see that there would be a war because he promised, God promised that the seed of the woman would crush the head of, of the serpent. Uh, spiritual warf warfare started in the Garden of Eden. And God made good on that promise, didn't he? Uh, for as Paul says, in the fullness of time, yeah, yeah, the son, of, the son of God came forth and was born in Bethlehem. Uh, he, he had to come in man's flesh in order to reclaim dominion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 God had to put on man's flesh and do and do differently than what Adam did. Yeah, he had to face Satan and resist him, whereby he would be able to purchase our authority back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Satan, Satan thought he had the upper hand. He, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was the one that was getting in Joseph's head to divorce. His, his fiance, Mary, who he was betrothed to, trying to humiliate Mary uh, uh, to, to cause a problem. And then when he couldn't get Joseph uh, to divorce his fiance, he used a king called Herod. Kill all the boys two and under. Uh, I, 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 I know Satan has always been there. He, he doesn't know what God is doing, but I know one thing he didn't plan on, and that was God becoming man. <laughs> Through a monkey wrench, I'm sure, in his plans. Uh, as Christ comes down and he, 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 he suffers as we have suffered. He was tempted as we were tempted. But he sinned not. Greater is he. <laughs> he. He sinned not. And then you look at Calvary, it would look like Satan has won. It would look like Satan has the victory. But what he doesn't know is that the cross is the price Christ has to pay to break the dominion of sin over our lives. He comes to destroy the works of the devil. As 1 John 3 and 8 says that God would use the cross 
Uh, he would use the cross as an instrument of death and destruction to destroy Satan's power. First John 3 and 8 says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Satan has been trying since the beginning to stop Christ. Uh, he's been trying since the beginning to hinder Christ. And isn't it, uh, uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that during Jesus' earthly ministry, we get so much demonic activity. Uh, we, we get a lot of demonic, I mean, they're, they're there in the Old Testament, but nobody confronted the kingdom of darkness in the Old Testament like Christ did in the New Testament. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so here we see that Christ has always had a hater. <laughs> He's always had somebody trying to hinder uh, the work that he was sent here to do from the beginning, from his prophecy of his existence. But greater is he. In Mark, the fifth chapter, it is one of the most descriptive accounts of a demon and an interaction with Christ. Uh, it, it's, it gives us uh, the inside or the insight into a demonic uh, maniac mind. It gives us uh, a glimpse into what they're thinking and how they feel. And we're going to learn some things uh, about demons from this text. Uh, but yet and still, we're going to learn greater is he. <laughs> But, but here in Mark, the fifth chapter, the first verse, it says, And they came over unto the sea, unto the country of the Gadarenes. Jesus has just, he's just got finished telling the waters, peace be still. Uh, he is in Gentile territory. That's, that's important. He's in Gentile territory, and he's approaching the seashore of the Gadarenes. In verse 2, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder, torn apart. And the fetters broken, the fetters are shackles. The shackles have been broken in pieces, and neither could any man tame him, or neither could any man subdue him. Yeah. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself yeah. with stones. Yeah. I think this, this, this man uh, 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 lets us know that he's a candidate for hopelessness. He is possessed by a demon. Uh, as the text says, an unclean spirit, which is nothing more than a demon. And a demon is a fallen angel who has followed Satan in his rebellion and now assists Satan in his plans and his opposition to God. Uh, 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 an unclean spirit that has taken control and, and, and taken influence over this man's body. Uh, anything that an unclean spirit touches, it perverts. Uh, 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 look, look at this man. He's, he's possessed by a demon and he's living in the graveyard. Uh, I, I'm sure that's not the, the way things always were. I'm sure at some point he lived amongst the villagers. He lived with his family. Uh, but but, but when, 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 when a demon has you, uh, it'll separate you uh, from what you love most. It puts you in a place that's unconventional. Here, here he's living in the tombs and no chains can hold him. Uh, he, he has unusual power. He's breaking chains and breaking fetters or breaking shackles and he's cutting himself with stones. This man has clearly lost his mind, <laughs> literally being possessed by this devil. He's cut off from society. He has, no longer has self-control. He has perverted his mind. He's perverted his life. He's twisted things. And, and you can see evidence of demonic breadcrumbs and evidence of demonic uh, influence when you see things perverted. 
perverting sexuality, perverting ministry, perverting music. They take it and they can anything they touch, they destroy. Destroying family, de de destroying righteousness, anything that they can get a hold of. Uh, but the good thing is that they can't get a hold of us. Yeah, 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 they, 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 they can uh, attack us, they can try to uh, 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 hinder us, but they can't possess us. Why? Because when we accepted Christ as our Savior, baby, we was filled with the Holy Ghost. And last time I checked, the Holy Ghost is God of the Trinity. He is the third of the Trinity, and at any time there is God on the inside, there's no room for a demon. There's no place for a demon, huh? That's why he prowls around looking for who? This man uh, uh, has lost his family. He's lost his mind. He's lost everything. And all, humans to, all human effort to help him is not enough. Uh, if you see chains, why chains? I think at some point he was hurting other people or he killed other people. And they tried to, to chain him down. And he was breaking the chains. Huh? This is what people who don't know Christ look like. Spiritually dead and in bondage to evil. He, he, he's a man who has, who has fallen to the lowest of the lows. And yet, when Jesus steps on the shore says when verse 6 when he was uh, when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshiped him now now wait a minute hold up this man has lost his mind he's cutting himself with stones you know how hard you got to be to cut yourself with a stone yeah. I, 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 he, he, he's, he's breaking chains he didn't recognize Jesus <laughs> the demons recognize Jesus. They, they would recognize him because they, they've been here for a long time. <laughs> that lets us know that demons have intellect. They're not dumb. Uh, they, they, they have intellect. He, he, the demon recognizes Jesus and he ran and he worshiped him. Now, don't get it twisted because demons believe and tremble. This, this isn't a worship that we just had. He's worshiping out of fear. He's worshiping out of intellect. Ooh, somebody just say greater is he. Y yeah, yeah, he's worshiping out of intellect because he knows who just stepped up on the shore. <laughs> he says here, and he cried with a loud voice. What have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou son of of the most high God. I adjure thee, my God, that thou tormentest me not. <laughs> I am sus because I enjoyed this text. He, he recognizes the authority of Christ. He calls him Jesus, the son of the most high God. But, 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 but what, what you got to look at is a joy. He says, I adjure thee. It, 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 really what he said is, I beg of you. But if we take it a step further, he really said, swear to God that you ain't going to torment me. <laughs> Greater is he. <laughs> he said, no, that's exactly what he said. Swear to God that you ain't going to torment me. Now, let's, let's unpack that because he says, what have I to do with thee? The demons see that the Son of God has walked into Gentile territory. First of all, what you doing over here? These, these ain't your peoples. This ain't, this ain't, this ain't your place. Uh, they, they know that Jesus can throw them in the lake of fire. They know that he can cast judgment at any moment. They know that he can throw them in the bottomless pit. And they know that he can send them to eternal demonic incarceration. But he said, I know you can do that, but what are you doing here now? See, their eschatology is amazing. They know the word of God. 
Yeah, I would read the Bible too if I'm in there. I know they be having meetings like, did you see Revelations 12? <laughs> no, nah, bro, no, nah, it ain't good. It, it, it ain't good at all, my brother. No, no, we need to have a meeting ASAP. This meeting is mandatory. <laughs> they, they, they understand that Revelations 20 and 10 says, Then the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet, that they will be tormented day and night forever. He's like, did, did, did that's supposed to happen at the second coming. Jesus, what you doing here right now? Don't, don't, don't torment us. Don't torment us now. Matthew 8 and 29, the demon said, don't torment us before our time. They smart. Also, we, we don't want to leave this body. We need a body. I, 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 we need a body to hide. Why? Why do we need a body so that we can continue to oppose your works? We need a body here in the earth. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't send us to the abyss. Don't send us uh, to the final judgment yet. Greater is he. You, see, you gotta understand the Jesus we serve has all power. Huh? He has all power. And what you got to understand, and I know it's going to sound crazy, but what I want to ask y'all this morning is, do you know what the demons know? <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. Do you know what the demons know? Do you know who he is and what he's capable of? That greater is he. That whatever it is you fighting, he's greater. They knew that Jesus had came to destroy the works of the devil. They knew that Jesus had come to destroy them. Uh, they knew that this man could be delivered. They just said, hey, <laughs> not right now. Don't, don't deliver him right now. Don't set him free right now. Uh, give, give us a little time. Uh, and, and, he, and he cried, uh, 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 verse 8, um, verse 7, and he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee, swear to God, that you ain't going to torment me not. And verse 8 says, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Wait, wait, wait a minute. The, the demons are using this man's vocal cords. He's, he, he, he done lost his own sense of being. They're talking for him. And he, Jesus asked them, and he didn't ask them because he didn't know. He asked them so it could be written in the text so we would know. <laughs> I just want to set the record straight. He knew who was in there. And so, uh, legion was a military term. It was a Roman unit of soldiers of about 6,000. Now, I don't know if there were 6,000 demons in this man, but I know there was more than one. I would believe that there were thousands of demons inside of this man. Uh, too many to count, possibly. But here we see, hold up, thousands of demons asking permission. <laughs> I just want y'all to see the Jesus that we serve. They, they, they ask him permission. <laughs> they, look, look here, it says, for, for, for we are many, and he besought him, he begged him that he would not send them out of the country. They, they, they're asking Jesus for permission. Listen, they even had to ask permission to go into the pigs. Look at verse 11. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of feeding swine. That's how we know we're in Gentile territory because the Jews didn't deal with pigs. That's another indicator. Oh, look, look at verse 12. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Now, I, I, I can't tell you why they wanted to go into the swine. But I do know they wanted to house another body. 
But the one thing that gives me comfort is that even the pigs had to get permit. They, they had to get permission from God to even go into the pigs. So if they had to get permission to go into the pigs, what they got to do when they want to come for you? And you carry the image of God. And you carry the presence of God. And you are covered in the blood of God. <laughs> I just need you to know who you are. You are blessed and highly favored. <laughs> They, they, they didn't want to leave the area. They wanted to stay in, uh, 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 in that Gentile territory because there was still work that they wanted to do. And so, so we see the sovereign power of Christ. I'm sorry, I didn't give y'all my first point. Uh, we saw the, de the demonic, um, the destructive power of demons. That was my first point. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. My second point is we see the sovereign power of Christ. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we see his sovereign power. You know what I like? Jesus is so calm. And I really want to make this point. He, I, I don't think he's yelling. When he asked, what, what, he probably said, what, what is your name? And I'm not, I'm not against yellers. I'm not against shouters. But shouting doesn't equate power. It's knowing who you are in Christ. As long as you operate in Christ, if you want to shout, shout, but you ain't got to. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, I mean, you do what you got to do. If that's what, how you want to uh, express your faith, express it. I have none. I just want you to know that 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 an emotional moment doesn't equate power. The power is knowing who you are in Christ. The power is knowing what Christ has done and the authority that He has over everything, over all demonic power, over the over nature, over diseases. Uh, that He has power over everything. And when you know who you are in Christ, and you know your identity in Christ and your position in Christ, you stand in Christ and say, "In the name of Jesus, you will be delivered. In the name of Jesus, you will be healed. In the name of Jesus, you will be set free." And forthwith, and forthwith, verse 13, immediately Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. Yes. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Yes. Look, look how they take on the character, the pigs, the swine took on the characteristics of the demons says they ran violently. All they want to do is destroy. But they couldn't get there until Jesus gave them permission. Huh? He has all authority. You, 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 when you're going through problems in life, you're going through battles, especially spiritual warfare, you must remember who Christ is. And the scripture says, greater is he that is where? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That has to be your reality, not just your intellect. Because there are some battles that only God can fight for you. For as I said, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Ephesians 6 and 12, but against principalities against powers and against rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Colossians 2.15 says, and having spoiled principalities yeah. and powers and made a show of them openly, yeah. triumphing over them in it. Yeah. He's talking about Christ when he disarmed the enemy. Yeah. The very thing we're fighting, he already defeated. Yeah. You just got to put on your faith. You got to put on your identity in Christ and walk in that victory and know who you are until you see the hand of God move in your situation. Your faith has to last longer than the attack because it's a fixed fight. We already got the victory. Greater is he. 
<laughs> and, and I'm saying it's very elementary, but it's very profound because we get amnesia sometimes in the midst of the battle. We forget who we are and we talk like we ain't already got the victory. But Christ is infinitely great. He is higher than the kings of the earth. He is higher than the heavens, higher than the highest of angels. He's ruler over the whole universe. He does whatever he please. His knowledge is without boundaries. His wisdom is perfect. His power is infinite. His riches are inexhaustible. His majesty is infinite. He raises the dead. He gives sight to the blind. He tells the lame to walk. He changed my wretched life. And wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is a above every name that at the name of Jesus. that at the name of Jesus. at the name of Jesus. every knee shall bow and everything in heaven and earth and every tongue must confess greater is he the demons know it do you know it the demons know it do you know it There's nobody like Jesus. Many have tried. It's been a lot of copycats. It's been a lot of wannabes, a lot of posers, but there's only one son of God. And I'm so glad that his tomb is empty. I'm so glad that he got up from the grave. And when he got up, what did he say? I got all power in his hands. We see the destructive power of demons. We see the sovereign power of Christ, but we also see the delivering power of Christ. Verse 15, and they came to Jesus, and they see, see that him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion. Look at him, y'all. He's sitting. He's clothed. And he's in his right mind. The power of Jesus makes the difference. Yeah. This man went from screaming in the graveyard to sitting. This man went from running around naked to now he's clothed. This man went from screaming and losing his mind to now he's in his right mind. Uh, <laughs> and guess what? He was a Gentile. He, he technically didn't deserve to receive the miracle. Would that let me know that nobody is beyond being redeemed? Nobody is beyond being saved? Nobody is beyond being set free? Does it matter what had you? Does it matter what possessed you? Does it matter the mistakes you made? He has delivery power. If he delivered you from something, just wave your hand and testify. We are not write people off as if they're hopeless when we know the one who has all power in his hands. I don't care how many times they've been to jail. I don't care how many times they done did this or that. God is able to do exceeding abundantly. For greater is he greater is he you might look at yourself you may have wrote yourself off shame on you when you know who the God that is able to do it that's crazy if I was in that, that community I'd have been like hmm. You see Trevor? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's not over there. He's over here. I know you didn't recognize him. Look at him. <laughs> now, now you got to understand. Ain't no Medicaid. <laughs> Ain't no therapy sessions. Ain't no ADHD medicine. Ain't 
no Ritalin? No Oxycontin? Y'all understand what I'm saying? This would blow their minds. How did he get here? How did he do that? Something about the name Jesus. <laughs> Something about the name Jesus. <laughs> it is the sweetest name. I know Trevor, I know Trevor got up and said, Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Right, my oh, how I love the name Jesus. <laughs> it is the sweetest. <laughs> I believe Trevor would have loved this song. But what's sad is that the people were actually afraid. It says that they were afraid to see this man in his right mind. Wow. What it is is they, they couldn't grasp how this Jesus has this type of power. We didn't try to chain him. We didn't try to kill him. We didn't try to get rid of him. Nothing we could do could save this man. So if you can save him, then who are you? <laughs> They were afraid. If you re read the text, it sounds like they more concerned about the pigs they lost. No one, listen, y'all, no one in the Gadarenes expressed joy that the man who was in the tombs cutting himself is now sitting in his right mind. Listen, some people can see a miracle and still miss God. And don't wait. For anybody to celebrate your deliverance, if you know God did it, praise him by yourself. If you know he kept you, praise him by yourself. Don't wait for somebody else's praise. Because if I did, brother, would have waited for somebody. And what's sad is that these folks actually asked Jesus to leave. See, so some people don't, they can't understand God, so they don't want nothing to do with him at all. And you know what Jesus did? named this man Trevor. <laughs> to any Trevors that's watching, we love you. We love you. Any, any Trevors out there. <laughs> and, and as... As... <laughs> as, as he was leaving, as Jesus was getting into the ship, this man pleaded with Jesus. He said, I, I want to go with you. This is, this is genuine. This is genuine. He's sincerely, in love. and I would understand because I think he was somewhat conscious when the demons possessed him. I think he remembers something. I think he was looking at the cuts on his body. He probably remembered how the people treated him. 
And then I'm, I'm sure he was getting some looks. So he was like, hey, Jesus, let me go with you. And they don't look too happy. <laughs> uh, he, he, he had a sincere desire for Christ. That's how you know you've been delivered. Your affection changes. You don't want that other stuff no more. Huh? You don't want that other stuff. But look at verse 19. He says, how be it, Jesus suffered him not. Verse 19 says, but saith unto him, go home to your friends. And tell, oh, Jesus, tell them how great the Lord hath done for thee and hath compassion on thee. You know, it's hard to forget that there was a man naked living in the graveyard, screaming and cutting himself. Can you imagine the opening of his sermon? Hey, I'm Trevor. And I'm the guy that y'all was keeping y'all kids from. I'm the guy y'all told everybody not to go see. Look what Jesus has done for me. Doors of the church open. What'd that tell us? That we got to go back to the people that know us and show them our wounds. Let me show you what Jesus did. I used to be addicted to porn. Let me show you what Jesus did. I used to be addicted to weed. Let me show you what Jesus did. I used to be addicted to fornication. Let me show you what, hi, my name is Judah. Let me show you what Jesus did. I know what you knew about me, but I've been changed. I've been delivered. And it's only by the power of God. You got to tell somebody. You can't keep that to yourself. You got to tell somebody what he set you free from so they can see that there's life-changing power in Jesus. And as I get ready to close, what's interesting is that when Jesus was in Jewish territory, he would tell the people he healed, don't say nothing. I got some Bible readers. Where my rabbi at? My rabbi here? He would say, shh, don't. Because they wasn't ready to receive him as the son of God. But remember, he's in Gentile territory. <laughs> See, he, he know they ain't caught up on the stuffy stuff that the Pharisees is caught up on. You hear me, my brother? That's good teaching, ain't it? He said, now listen, you go tell everybody. <laughs> you, you go tell everybody the compassion I show you. You tell everybody what I did for you. Why? So that somebody can be saved. And it says here, and he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. The only thing I don't like about that is it doesn't say they accepted Christ. It just says they were astonished. You can be astonished and not accept Christ. You're like, ooh, that's nice. Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> but God had a purpose for a man that was hopeless. He had a destiny for a man that was written off. Why? Because he was greater than what possessed, what possessed the man. No matter how destructive the demonic power is, you got to remember the God you serve. Huh. <sighs> Especially when you praying for people dear like your spouse. Sometimes your spouse go through something and you, you done everything you can to help them. You did everything. Now let Jesus do something. Sometimes you're dealing with your children. You done did everything you can. You done bought them everything. You done got them out. You done post bail. I oh, don't act like you ain't had to get some of your family members out of jail in the middle of the night. I remember my daddy waking me up three in the morning. We got to go get him. <laughs> well, we done all we can. Now it's time to let Jesus do what he do. Huh? So I want you to remember who he is. He's the son of God. 
I want you to know what he's capable of, that he destroys the works of the enemy. I want you to remember that he did it for you. He's your Lord and Savior. And lastly, I want you to walk in the reality that whatever battle you're fighting, he already won it. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Be encouraged, new community. I love you. Hallelujah.